So welcome everyone to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I've got my painting clothes on because that's what we do here. We get messy playing with paint. Um, recently I just popped into Spotlight just to pick up a few bits and bulbs before we hit the four week lockdown here in New Zealand and um, I spotted that they had these um, set of colour Pabo paints um, which are fabric paints and uh, they I haven't played with these before they uh, apparently pretty good so uh, they had had them on clearance I think they're going out of that range and guess what they were only a dollar each uh, now I think normally they're sort of like eight, nine, ten, twelve, somewhere around there. So at a dollar each. They were on special before that for five dollars, so they were obviously used to be a lot more than that. From memory, they were similar to the Paybo Porcelain 150, which I've used on mugs. You may have seen that in a previous video just recently. If not, head back to the at the end of the video I always put a link to um my acrylic pouring nz playlist and that has got all of my videos in it over 600 at this point so um head on over there and check out though that video and see if that could be fun for you as well but this is uh this is what we're doing today <laughs> we're pouring a hat i picked this hat up for like four dollars so between them at least, at, at worst, it's going to cost me six dollars. Now, I did. It does say on the thing to pre-wash any fabric that you're painting on. Uh, I ran it under some cold water and popped it outside. It's mostly dry. It's a little bit damp, but hey, you know we've got water-based paint here. It's not really going to be an issue. I don't think. I hope not. Never done it before. This is a new experience for me. I've got some material bundled up inside a plastic bag stuffed inside there and then just got it sitting on top of a container which is pretty much about the same size so it's reasonably supported i'm not going to say it's perfect because i'm not perfect so i can't expect it to be <laughs> so what um uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get these paints to a consistency which we can pour with because this does not pour it and this one is even worse i'm wondering if that is why they are getting rid of them they weren't selling and these have slowly slowly gone oh, original seven dollars there you go How's it getting any better than that? So I'm wondering if these have dehydrated on the shelf at Spotlight, to be honest. Now it does say in the instructions, and I'll put a link in the description below to the instruction sheet for this product. Uh, so any any information I give you here is from that sheet, so go and have a look at it. Uh, makes it easy for both of us. But it does say that you can water it down and use it sort of like water um watercolor paint so i'm not feeling uncomfortable thinning it enough to pour because really thinning it enough to make it watercolor is a lot thinner so just got a little squeezy bottle here with water in it and i'm just gonna start adding some water and start stirring and anytime you're trying to thin down some paints guys please make sure that you thin them down a little bit at a time. It may take a little while, but just a few drops, especially in this small container. This container is supposed to hold 45 milliliters. And um, yeah, it's about two thirds full and it's brand new off the shelf. So I'm guessing it's dehydrated quite a bit. But you don't want to go pouring in too much by accident and uh, ending up with something you can't use because it's way past where you were planning to be. So 
So I'm going to stop talking and stir and I'll be right back. Now sometimes when you stir something like paint a lot, and I seem to have found it happens a real lot on all orangey yellow colours, you get a lot of air bubbles stay. So I'm not sure what that is about. But it's good to get as many of those out as you can. By tapping it on the bench it brings the bubbles to the top. And... Um, helps them to settle out, pop out. All right. I'm quite liking the consistency of the purple. Maybe a little bit thinner. But with all those bubbles in the orange, it's really, really hard to see how what consistency it actually is. All right. I've had enough of mixing. <laughs> So, I just want to let you know that this paint does require heat setting. They recommend that it can be done on all pre-washed fabrics. Cotton, wool, mesh, jersey, velvet, jacquard, knit, polyester, mixed fibres and even leather. Um, but it does have to be heat set. So it needs to be a fabric that you can heat up. Uh, and you can either do it with five minutes on a cotton setting on your um, with your iron or you can put it in the kitchen oven at 150 degrees C or 300 degrees F and um, after five minutes it's fixed so I think I would probably prefer to go that way although if you're using um, a particular type of material, maybe test it before you start. <laughs> I am not responsible for any of your creations. <laughs> All right, let's just pop back over to me. And again, make sure you've got dirty clothes on, that your area is covered with protective something. Uh, and you're ready to pour, really. Uh, what I thought I might do is do a spiral pour on the top and um, and then perhaps a line pour, a ribbon pour across the cap peak. So to do that we're going to need a container that has a pouring capacity and this is just a um, what do you call them a tuna tin where I've used a edge cut can opener to take the lid off that just makes a nice smooth edge which isn't going to cut me but it also leaves a little lid if you do it before you pull the ring tab huh, um, it leaves a little lid that fits perfectly and you can just pop it back on and save whatever's in there. Obviously not once you've done this. So I'm just going to pour those paints one on top of the other. Or should I do a big mass of one and a big mass of the other and then do the spiral pour and see what now I'm going to do several layers. So technically what the layer that's on the bottom will be the layer that's on the top is the thing to kind of go by. But let's see. Let's see what shows up. So to 
just want to check this camera is showing you what what's going on I'm gonna do reasonably big dollops of paint I can see all those air bubbles And I'm going to leave some behind in the pot to use for the ribbons. He's hoping we've got enough. We've only got 90 mils of paint here. It should be fine. And as I said, the material is almost dry, but it's still a little bit. Um, just going to start off by doing the rings around the widest points. And at this rate, I am not going to end up with anything that looks vaguely good. <laughs> Although the colour is seeping into the slightly damp material and uh, if I just left it like that, the purple is just seeping around. I'm kind of regretting starting it further out, but I did save some paint so we're good with that. Let's just get that dampened down um, and pour some more. Just going to do slightly thinner layers this time because we're wanting to have Now my question is, do I try and get it covered? I think I do. Probably going to run out of paint. I'm going to regret making that decision. I can hear someone out there going, just spin it. <laughs> I adore you guys. Now, what colours am I using? Um, we have got shimmering brick red, although it looks orange to me. And it does shimmer, it's very cool actually. Just picking up what's dripping off. I'm using that. Rubbing it in.
please excuse the truck noises. My husband's just bringing all the vehicles back to the yard. Unfortunately, we can't work if the, our suppliers don't supply us. We ain't got concrete, we can't do work. Just going to bring that colour. pushing down hello <coughs> come and see the mess I'm making <laughs> <laughs> that's a good looking mess it is a good looking mess it's kind of messy too yes <laughs> have fun thank you That side's kind of getting vaguely covered. The paint is slowly getting to all the bits. Learn from my mistakes, guys. Learn from me if you're going to do this. I'm just going to dip my finger in the in the tin and use that and don't forget that band across the back of the head I've seen some pretty ugly caps out there where they've got nice pretty colors and then a boring black band a boring white band and hey, commercial caps, you can understand that in the process. But this is your creation. So, what I might recommend to you if you were going to be doing this, perhaps run around and put a layer of your colours mixed together first. Brush it on with a brush, cover all the white, get a, a base. How much paint have I got left? I know that I've got more orange than I've got purple because that's the way it was once I'd finished mixing them up. Oops. get into the seams otherwise you end up with little white gaps in your cap now I have done
paintings on wall paintings on material before I've done it on t-shirts and shoes and uh, all sorts of things with all sorts of different combinations of paint um, some paints that are made for this sort of thing some paints that are just normal acrylic paints with a particular medium mixed in you can get a fabric medium for acrylic paint um, and I tell you what I've had great results with all of them really so there'll be a link in the description to a playlist of all those videos so head on down to there after this one's finished and have a look right and of course it's up to you and how much of paint you've got as to whether you do the underneath of the peak um, I would just be very aware of if you're not planning to paint under there of your drips of where you end the paint and all those sorts of things because if you get a fingerprint under there from grabbing the cap in a particular place eek, it ain't going to be easy to fix I'm liking this I'm okay with this it's just this front part that I really Urgh. just doesn't seem to want to run Maybe I should have watered it down a bit more.
I wish I had some of the pure orange. Just run a bit through there. But it's all mixed up and looking quite so funky in there. I'm going to stop <laughs> and just let it run. Just going to pop some air bubbles. Who knows, warming the paint might make it run more, but then again it might make it set. it get better than this let me bring you up and show you the top it's kind of cool I really like it but people don't see the top of your head do they <laughs> all right let's leave it to dry who knows how long that will take. I need to go and do some prep work for the 14 days of pouring with Michelle. <laughs> Are you coming to join me on that? $10 and you get 14 lives with me. In a row. <laughs> how much fun can we have? I need all you guys. I'll see you super soon. So... Uh, I think it's dry. It's still a bit tacky. I don't think it's supposed to be poured to that thickness. Um, it's it's tacky, but it's not actually wet. Like, I can touch it and my fingers come off clean. It has been two days and it does say in the instructions that it should be air dried in an hour. <laughs> um but all my pots and everything are all dried so uh i think and they have actually dried tacky as well so i'm just gonna say it's dry <laughs> i came back in and signed it look at that so i'm gonna take if i had some paint left i would go in and paint the underside of the cap as well i'm gonna take this off the instructions say that you should iron it on the back for five minutes or put it in the oven um, for five minutes at 150 degrees C or um, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm going to use my mug one and remove the three. So five minutes. <laughs> it's easy, eh? So I really love it. I think it's funky. I love the way the color has come out. I love the way this kind of looks matte and this is shiny. Um, it's, it's cool. I like it. So I'm going to go and bake it and see what happens. I hope I don't ruin it because I have no idea whether this is plastic under here. And also you've got your Velcro. I don't know whether that's going to get ruined in the oven as well. But we'll see. I'll show you when it comes out. <laughs> here we go. One, two. Well doesn't quite look the same does it so what have I learnt 
I've learned that what's in here shrinks <laughs> uh, and flattens. I've had to reshape that over a round thing. Uh, two and a half minutes into the five minutes, uh, there was smoke pouring out of the oven. Uh, and the cap was flat. The, the brim was flat. So I've reshaped it before it cooled, just to give it a bit of shape. But the whole thing has shrunk. Um, turns out this material in here is acrylic material. It's, it's uh, designed to wick the sweat away, not hold onto it like cotton would. It's also got foam in here, which um, you can see actually there's some melted plastic there. Um, it's shrunk so much that I've got a small head well, not small small but reasonably small normally the cap fully closed would be right for me so it's shrunk a good inch plus um, and it just looks odd I think there's far too much plastic in this cap to cook it and thinking about it now, really, unless you're planning on getting it really dirty and washing it regularly, you probably didn't need to do that in the first place. Uh, maybe leave it outside in the hot sun on a hot day. It might be all it needs. Also, I'm not really sure that the inside was completely dry. Because it had been sitting on that plastic bag, I think it still had some moisture in it, which may have added to what looked like smoke. And if you see here, see if I can get, it's crazed quite dynamically and I think that maybe the paint hadn't, hadn't dried. So, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I think the interlining, the, the, whatever this is here has shrunk as well. Um... Yeah, it just doesn't quite look as awesome as it did before. Check out the shape of that brim. It's that's how much the the cap has shrunk. We've got a whole heap of spare material that's as this has shrunk that way. We've ended up with bubbles. So don't cook it. <laughs> It looked fantastic up until then. Uh, on second thoughts, what I should have done is taken the padding out and just let it sit on a on a rack in the sun for a couple of days and just completely dry out and left it at that. It would have been totally fine. You learn, live and learn, guys. I did like it. And uh, I've got to remember to make sure I edit a lot of that tattooing out it was or at least make it go faster for you it was a long process so there we go my attempt at painting a cap this is my second attempt actually uh, I will link I keep dropping it I will link in the description my first attempt and that was done uh, 18 months ago she still has it she still wears it and it's still working totally fine so um, yeah, I will put a link to that in the description below. Go have a check that out and see what I did different. I didn't cook it. <laughs> All right, my sweet friends, have fun. And tomorrow's video, we start on our 14 days of live with my Patreons. So you get to hear them making smart rocks in the background. They get to pick all the colors and all the things. Still time to chew, to join us on that. Um, Ten US dollars, and you get to. We've, today was day three, so uh, if you jumped on in today, you'll be on time for tomorrow, and you'll have still have eleven left to go. You also get to see the previews of what I've created, um, and stuff like that. So jump in, say hi. Come play and I uh, hope you are all having fun and looking after yourselves uh, around the world. We are definitely 
choosing a different reality in our household. I, Damien and Glenn have shaved their heads this morning. <laughs> uh, jump over to my personal Facebook page and have a look at the photos of that if you want to. Um, but yeah, this definitely, I, I have another hat. Actually, let me have a look. Let's see how much it shrunk. Look at that. That is a big, big difference. Look at how di different the cat, the, the brim is. Wow. Oh well. I'm not going to cook this one. I don't have any more of that paint either, so who knows what I'm going to paint on this. I might have to wait till I get some more fabric medium and use that. Uh, anyway, my friends, thank you for joining me. Hope you've had fun and enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. We are within about, uh, at recording this, I've got 40 more subscribers to go before I hit the 50,000. I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. And I look forward to continuing to play with you all over the coming weeks, months, and possibly even years. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and help me hit that amazing thing. I'm going to put a questionnaire um, question into the community tab asking you to give me ideas on what should I do as a celebration when I hit 50,000? What would you like me to do? Um, yeah, so head on over to the community tab and let me know there what you think I should do. I adore you. I had fun. I look, hope you have and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.